but we're looking at the top of the patient's head. They're lying down in front of us, supine, okay? This is anterior, you can see their nose right here, right, left, frontal bone, parietal bones, occipital bones here. We're gonna put them in a vault hold. We're looking down right at the top of their head. Now let's add our sphenoid. This is our sphenoid here. No, it's not a sphenoid, but as far as 3D goes, this is the best I could do. It's an atlas. And let's add our occiput. No, it's not technically an occiput. It's a sacrum, but it's the best I can do for 3D at this point in time. All right, there's the greater wings of the sphenoid. There's the basi sphenoid, the basi occiput. There's the squama there. Now remember, your second digit or index finger is going to be on the greater wings, and your fifth digit or your pinky finger is going to follow the occipital squama. And remember, wherever the basi sphenoid goes, that's the direction that the sphenoid is moving. All right, let's see how our sphenoid and occiput move in flexion and extension. So here's our greater wings, and you can see those greater wings are going to both move inferiorly and laterally. You can see that. Meanwhile, this basi sphenoid is going to move right towards your face. It's going to move towards you as you're sitting at the head of the patient. You can clearly see that basi sphenoid moving towards you. Now, the occiput, the basi occiput is going to move towards you, and the occipital squama are going to move inferiorly towards the feet. Look at that basi occiput coming right towards you, and you can see that occipital squama moving right towards the feet. What I don't want you to forget is during flexion as the paired bones, like the parietal bones, the maxillary bones, igoma bones, all those bones are externally rotating during flexion and they're causing the face or the head to get fatter or wider. So now during extension, the greater wings are going to come towards you and the basi sphenoid are going to move inferiorly towards the feet. So greater wings moving superior or right towards you, and you can see that basi sphenoid moving inferiorly or towards the feet. Now, the, bit, the greater wings are also moving medially or coming closer to the midline. And the same thing's gonna happen to the occiput. You're gonna see the basi occiput move inferiorly towards the feet, and you're gonna see the occipital squama coming right towards you, as you can see that. The squama are also coming medially as well. The greater wings and the occipital squama are moving towards the midline, okay? But all the paired bones, like the parietal bones, the zygoma, the maxillary bones, are also internally rotating, and the skull is actually getting more narrow. Now let's get into the axes. So the axes, axes for flexion and extension of the sphenoid and the occiput are transverse or horizontal. And this one is, and the one for the sphenoid is right over the body of the sphenoid. And the one for the occiput is foramen magnum. Now, let's talk about the plane that they're gonna move in. It's going to be a, so it's gonna be a sagittal plane in which they move for flexion and extension. So here we are with the sagittal plane. So both the sphenoid and the occiput move around transverse or horizontal axes in flexion and extension, and they move in a sagittal plane. Another crucial concept that you have to understand in cranial is that during both flexion and extension, the sphenoid and occiput are rotating in opposite directions around their respective transverse axes. So remember, during flexion, the SBS moves cephalad or superiorly, okay? So what's that gonna look like? So if the basi sphenoid, okay, is moving superiorly, do you see how that's a clockwise movement? Okay, clockwise movement. Now that contrasts with the occiput. Okay, the occiput, when the SPS moves superiorly, do you see how it's moving counterclockwise? So, in both flexion and extension, you will see that the sphenoid and the occiput rotate in opposite directions around two transverse axes. Okay, so now let's talk about movement and rotation in extension. So, in extension, 
the SBS is going to move inferiorly or caudad. That means the basi sphenoid is going to move inferiorly. Okay. All right. And that means the basi occiput is going to move inferiorly. All right. So now what is that going to look like when we put this in a rotation? What is it going to look like? All right. So if the basi sphenoid moves inferiorly, okay, do you see how that is a counterclockwise move? It's moving counterclockwise, okay? Now, when the, when the basi occiput moves inferiorly, what's that going to look like? When the basi occiput moves inferiorly, that is a clockwise rotation. So just like in flexion, okay, extension, they rotate in opposite directions around transverse axes. Use your hands and cranial, especially when you're taking examinations. So we're going to sort of set up so you know how to do that. This hand that is going horizontally is going to be your sphenoid. This is the sphenoid on the skull. Here's your greater wings. Here's your greater wings. There's your basi sphenoid. As you can see on this top hand that is going horizontally, here's your greater wings. There's your basi sphenoid. Now, your hand that is going vertically, okay, here's your basi occiput. There's your occipital squama. And that compares to the real occiput that is over here. There's your basi occiput. There's your squama. And again, it's important that you understand these so you can utilize your hands on your examinations. Here we go. So, to palpate the occiput, your fifth digit or your pinky finger is gonna be on the occipital squama. And just to review, your ring finger or your fourth digit is on the mastoid process, which is not a bone, it's part of the temporal bone. And then your middle finger is gonna be anterior to the external auditory canal. And then, your index finger is going to be right on the greater wing of the sphenoid, which is here. So you just find the rim of the orbit and just move posteriorly. So that's our setup. Now what's going to happen during flexion is, during flexion, what you're going to feel is the skull getting fatter or wider and your fingers moving inferiorly. So that's flexion. Extension, they're coming back. So during extension, they're moving towards the midline or becoming more narrow, and they're moving superiorly. Flexion inferiorly and fatter, extension superiorly and towards the midline. Use your hands and cranial, especially when you're taking examinations. So we're gonna sort of set up so you know how to do that. This hand that is going horizontally is gonna be your sphenoid. This is the sphenoid on the skull. Here's your greater wings. Here's your greater wings. There's your basi sphenoid. As you can see on this top hand that is going horizontally, here's your greater wings. There's your basi sphenoid. Now, your hand that is going vertically, okay, here's your basi occiput. There's your occipital squama. And that compares to the real occiput that is over here. There's your basi occiput. There's your squama. And again, it's important that you understand these so you can utilize your hands on your examinations. During flexion, your basi sphenoid and your basi occiput are going to move superiorly. Simultaneously, your greater wings and your occipital squama are gonna move inferiorly. You can clearly see that. Now during extension, the opposite's gonna happen. Basi occiput and basi sphenoid are gonna move inferiorly while your greater wings and your occipital squama both move superiorly. Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension.